Hello, my name is Gonzalez Lopez Ternas, and in this video I will present VASTRA, a method for modeling the longitudinal dynamics of learning and behavior, which I submitted to the team conference with my colleague Mohamed Zak. The need for this method arises from the current limitations of learning analytics literature. Although there are multiple methods to analyze learners' data, most studies are limited to examining a single course or educational activity. While there is a clear lack of longitudinal studies that examine students' evolution throughout their study program. On the other hand, the body of longitudinal research as a whole is quite large, using methods such as DBTM, GMM, or longitudinal K means. However, a shared methodological limitation of such methods is that they enable the analysis of only a single variable over time. The VASTRA method that we propose aims to combine the advantages of clustering methods that allow to discover latent trains for multiple variables with life event methods such as sequence analysis, with the aim of mapping the longitudinal temporal dynamics of the phenomenon under study. The VASTRA method is divided in three steps. The first step is clustering students according to the variables under study into states in a way that each student is assigned a state at each time point. The second step deals with building a sequence of states for each student, which represents the evolution of their states throughout time. The third and last step is the identification of students with similar sequences of states, or in other words, who follow similar trajectories. Since an abstract explanation can be a bit hard to follow, here is a real-life example. Imagine we have 89 students that have followed 20 courses in a row, and we have collected their LMS activity data across the whole program, including the number of days they have logged in, the session number and duration, the number of times they have performed each different action in the LMS, etc. We first can use such variables to cluster students at each course according to their engagement levels. This way, we obtain three different clusters or engagement states, active, moderate, and inactive students. The method used was latent profile analysis in this case, but it could be any other clustering technique or manual division according to some established thresholds. In the next step, we build a sequence for each student using the engagement states for each course. This way, a student is represented by a sequence of 20 time-ordered states. In the index plot on the right, we can see an overview of all 89 students across the 20 courses. In the last step, we use hierarchical clustering to cluster similar sequences into trajectories. In this case, mostly active, mostly moderate, and mostly inactive. The three trajectories can now be studied separately or compared, for example, in terms of performance. We have used the VASTRA method in several articles before, with a similar aim to study engagement states throughout the whole program and how engagement trajectories can be used to predict dropout. We have also used VASTRA to study how collaboration roles evolve in computer-supported collaborative learning across a whole study program. and to study how approaches to learning programming vary through a course between high and low achievers. To conclude, we have seen how the Vastra method can be used to study different aspects of students' learning when we have repeated measures and when we believe we have a heterogeneous population where students undergo different evolutions. The main advantage of Vastra is to offer an intuitive method for longitudinal analysis that combines learning analytics methods with live events methods with a wealth of visualizations and statistical analysis. Thank you very much for listening. This project has been funded by two Erasmus Plus projects, Envision 2027 and ILEDA, and by the Academy of Finland's project Topela.